All right. Hey, y'all. Welcome to my um, YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have not subscribed, please make sure that you subscribe. So today I have my husband, Lindrick, here with me, and we're also really fortunate to have the Nesbits with us. So we have Sharion and Joshua here today, and we're just going to talk about marriage. So before we jump right in, you guys kind of just Share how long you've been married, how many kids you got, all that stuff. Okay, I'll start while it's on the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we've been married for seven years. We've been together 17 years. Wow. Um, have three kids, a 10-year-old, six-year-old, and a five-year-old. Wow. How, let me ask you, how did y'all do that six and that five together? Because I just got the one. I'm struggling. struggling. So I'm going to be real honest. They're pretty much twins. I was on birth control, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it wasn't no purpose. No, no, no. I caught the flu. And those two medications do not interact well. And so, yeah, Callie came. <laughs> Look, I told if if she was telling me, she, I would, I'd probably cry. I, I I can't do it. Yeah, everybody keeps saying it, have a baby, and I'm like, my husband might try to leave me. I like can't we can't, it. we can't do it. I can't like do it. it was not in on our neck since he got here. So yeah, we yeah we can't do it. So yeah. we got done. Okay. So <laughs> uh, just to get some more about you guys' story, since you guys have been together so long, just kind of tell us a little bit about your love story, like. Who was interested in who first, and y'all get into marriage? But I tell you this: well, she was running behind me. No, <laughs> 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 no, nah, nah, it actually started off. Uh, actually, started off as kind of like a, a joker. It, you know, it really wasn't that serious. Um, both of us on the basketball team. Um, one of my teammates would just—I don't even really know what he was doing. He was sending message to her, then sending message back to me. Then I just got tired of it, and I walked up to the car uh, after one game, and just it just went from there. <laughs> just like just that. Just like that. It's like that. Um, and we he we started having conversations, and he would be like, "I didn't think you would be the type to want to talk to me because." You just seem stuck up, but you're not really stuck up. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so, like, you know, high, high school, you going back and forth, right. back and forth. Right. And he wouldn't leave me alone. And so, <laughs> <laughs> like, we started as, like, really cool friends or whatever. And then he got to get real comfortable with my family. I was kind of hesitate with his family because I would go over and visit and his mom would give me a look like mm, why you think my son <laughs> that he was like that was her showing that okay um I really like you but I got I have my eyes on you because he was like no just was able to come over there and visit like I was <laughs> so he's a he's a mama's boy and she's very overprotective of him. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. the, my family that everybody's gonna try to protect. Yeah. So whoever I talked to, whoever I was talking to, they was looking at them sideways anyway. So I had to get that test. I had to get tested out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when did y'all? So y'all started in high school. When did y'all realize that like this is like some forever like this is the one well starting out joshua is quiet like he's quiet but as we started to pro progress and things like that i started seeing like um characteristics of my dad and i will always say i'm not i'm not dating anybody that's like my daddy you know i'm not dating any because he's stingy like <laughs> so, anybody <laughs> but also my dad didn't have bad characteristics because he was a family man um humble come from humble beginnings and josh 
like he was bad. He was country, but also had a little um in him. I didn't want a little pretty boy or whatever. So, <laughs> and he was just, he started to become more open and real. And I needed, like, I needed that in my life because I'm, I'm one to be honest. Sometimes I can think I know it all, but Josh can be so polite and humble you in the humblest way. And he don't even know, you know, he don't even know this is him. And so his characteristics of being a humble family, a family guy, I thought he was very overprotective of his mom. So I'm like, this guy gonna take care of me too. So <laughs> how you treat, I just feel like how you treat your mom, how you treat your sister, you know, you get, you have to treat your wife like that. So that's what I saw. Uh, for me, uh, it started out. I just, I just saw all the all the things she was doing for me, um, and it wasn't like material stuff. It was um, the calling, checking me, um, what well, not checking me, checking on me, um, the the driving back and forth because she was in Augusta when I was in college, so she would drive to Atlanta or drive to Greensboro, like. Little things like that, um, it showed that you know she really did care for me, and and I would say the major thing that made me say yeah, this is one for me is is the how can I say this? I would say how caring she is um, because. You don't meet too many, especially in college. You, you know, you, you see a lot. And I was in Atlanta, so I, you know, being on a football team, I saw a lot of different women being out in the street or with my other teammates. And I saw how people really do act. Um, and me coming from a country town in, you know, Greensboro, we don't see that all the time. And I knew for a fact I didn't want that. I didn't want nobody that was, you know, just out there, out there. And she's an outgoing person. She's a loving person. She's a family first. She's going to make sure I'm straight before anything else goes. Um, <laughs> and one, one, other, uh, one other thing, it was just one time in college, uh, we got into a, 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 got into a real bad argument. Um, <laughs> And she would keep calling, and I didn't answer the phone for a week. You remember this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, said, I didn't answer the phone for a week. And, um, and she was just real mad at me. But she thought I was just out seeing other people or whatever she was thinking. But the real thing was, is I didn't answer the phone, but every morning I wake up, she's on my mind. Throughout the day, she's on my mind. I mean, I'm in class, or when I go to sleep, she's on my mind. If that's when I knew I was like, okay, this is for the law. <laughs> this is for the law. And you know, the thing with marriage too is, I knew she was the one for me before we got married. But like I told you before, I had to make sure I was ready to be married. So because marriage is. Marriage is a full time job. It's 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 not it's not for no no little boy. It's not for anybody. <laughs> you really have to be up to the task to be married. Yeah, and, and too, you know what I heard both of you guys say. You know, I think a lot of times, especially at a younger age, you're looking at the the outside, like the looks. You're looking at the the you know that stuff don't maintain. A relationship, you know what I'm saying? Like I was in Atlanta too. Now I went at Tech, but I was in Atlanta too. And it was uh it, you know, I went through the phase of of just trying to, to find the baddest girl I could find or just whatever it is. But that stuff is like you know, like this is this isn't going any further than you know what it is. But like when I same thing, like we just talking, I, I got it because when I met Tracy, it was like I could tell she was different, and I wasn't ready to give up just yet. The <laughs> I was trying to hold on to, right? But it's like you, you see the characteristics of some stuff that like as life as life happens, like these characteristics are gonna help me maintain, you know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of times we I was looking at the 
the the looks and the you know the body and all that other stuff and that stuff is all temporary you know what i mean so when i you i was talking that was that stood out to me because i feel like that's something that you have to have in the marriage and of course you're supposed to be attracted to your spouse and all that but that's not going that's not the the foundation to build on right. yeah take a foundation build on is really fresh you have to enjoy you really have to enjoy that person right that's the one for me yeah. Yeah. Cause it's every day. Like every day. when I was like, when we first got, I was like, yo, I gotta get up and do this over again tomorrow. <laughs> like, I have been single. I've been living by myself until I was twenty a long, a long time. So I was like, yo, we gotta. I gotta look at her tomorrow. I gotta get up and do this again tomorrow. Every day. Every day. Uh, but it's it was the it's the best decision. Like I've grown more in marriage than I did in twenty years of 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 being single. Reason I think people grow within marriage because every morning you have to look yourself in the mirror and and really check yourself. If you don't check yourself, there's a lot of problems coming. Yeah. Right, you're right about so that. You got to look in the mirror. At, see, when you're single, you can you know look in the mirror and become whoever you want to become, <laughs> and that's how you can attack that day. But if once you once you marry, I mean, you are who you are. You're right. Yeah, you do have to do a lot of self-reflection because it's no longer just about you you know like you you have to be in agreement with your spouse about what you guys are doing for your family for you know whatever so i think that that's that's very true very true um so how have you guys because y'all got three kids how have you guys managed the children the family but still making each other a priority because one day the kids gonna be grown right and they're gonna be living their own life and it's just gonna be y'all so it's so important that in a marriage that you don't lose yourself just as being parents because you don't want to look at your spouse and be like i don't know you because it's just been about the kids so how do you guys manage and balance the family and then you guys' relationship i would say I would say our village, we're fortunate enough to have a great village and communication, those are the top two. Right. Um, sometimes Joshua and I would sit up to two, two or three o'clock in the morning talking, talking about, okay, what's on your mind? How are you feeling? What do I need to work on as a husband? What do I need to work on as a wife? We sit and we sit up and, and, and it's gonna take those late night, early mornings because of the three kids. Because pride, right. our kids, I mean, we are the happiest people on earth, but we don't want them to ever see us mad at each other. Right. So and if if we're mad at each other, it's two or three, four o'clock in the morning, we gonna air it out. <laughs> so because we don't want to attack the next day with the same something same. from the previous day. Yeah, that's um, good. As far as dating and trying to get uh and have somewhat of a date every now and then, like I said, our village, my parents are great, my in-laws are great. Um his mom is wonderful. And Papa, my daddy, is wonderful when we <laughs> ask, like, okay. Kids want to come over, or okay, we send the kids down. We have something to do, and even when we're in that home in Greensboro, and the kids are at my parents. Sometimes we'll be like, okay, let's go sit at the bar and have drink, yeah. or just go eat, just something quick like that. Because okay, we know the we know the kids are in good hands. We know they have to come back home with us tonight, so let's just get it in while we down here visiting. Right. Yeah. Just those pop-up dates, um, plan dates, um, and we and we also make sure that we both give our each other time. Like I have my self-care days a lot more than he does, um, but that's his choice because he's a homebody, so he wants to be at the house. <laughs> and so, and my <laughs> choice is to be out shopping or nails or something just so I can relax. Right. Sometimes I wake up at six o'clock in the morning and walk through the grocery store. So it's my time to just 
reflect and you like, we're going to the grocery store. So we both communicate knowing that, okay, I need my time, you need your time, and we both have to have that time together. So pop-up dates and plan dates in our village and communication is very key. So, yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, we used to, we haven't been doing them as much lately, but we used to do like a weekly check-in too. I'm more of a talker and a feeler than he is. And so it used to be really helpful to do them because that's when I would really get stuff out of him. Like, what's going on? How do you feel about this in our marriage? Like, how do you feel about that? Because otherwise, like, he may not say it or he may wait to say it. And sometimes the same for me, just depending on, like, how deep it is. But those things, like, are really helpful because, like, you got to be willing to have, like, those those real hard conversations to make it work because they could be trying their best loving you the best they can but you may need something else you know and so that's that's another thing that i think has because joshua um joshua would sometimes now starting off it was rough because like i said he 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 was a real prideful person and it's not that I think he was meaning to. I just think we had two different upbringings and him being raised by a single parent, like he was just taught. He would say, I was just taught like that. It is going to take some time. And I think college really helped him, you know, come out of that. But some days it would be like, I was like, okay, Josh, come on. You know, you can do better or something like that. And I think the way I was coming out, he was thinking that, okay, you're trying to tell me what to do. But now that we've grown um, a little bit more, he would ask, like, okay, what can I do to make you, you know, feel better about this situation? Being willing to say, okay, I miss up. I know it's a better way. Mm-hmm. And that's for both of us. Like, I'm more so of, okay, if we get into it, I will be ready to argue two and three o'clock in the morning. But I can't argue with the wall because this one right here is not going to argue back mm-hmm. at all. Nothing. That, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, that will sit there and be like, like, just look. <laughs> <laughs> First year of marriage, I learned my lesson like, you know what? We ain't going nowhere with this. <laughs> If she's sitting at the arguing, I'm not saying that you gonna find out quick if it's really deep. <laughs> <laughs> find out quick if it's really deep. Do you want to continue pretty much arguing with yourself? And I'll tell you how I feel about it. But if it's not that deep, I'm not gonna, you know, go back and forth. right? I'm not gonna go back and forth when it's not really necessary. I feel like. And I think people in marriages need to know that you are going to have arguments. You're going to have, you are going to have those deep conversations. But does it mean to carry on two and three days afterwards? We didn't know. You can't. Like, that, you that's the to- part that uh, I think we, we better with it, but she was dragged <laughs> out. You know, or she would say, I'd be like, well, what's going on? She'll say nothing, right? But the whole demeanor changed. Like, I know how you behave. I know you hold it. So it's, obviously it's something. So now yeah. I'm mad because you're not telling, and it's just the whole, and I like, my my home is is peace. Like when I get home, I want to be able to cheer. I want to be at peace. And the, the house just, it's just that silence that's so loud. I'm like, yo, I can't do this. You're going to have to <laughs> tell me. But the, the struggle with that was I never wanted to come off like being super emotional, right? So like if I feel a way, I'm like, let me process how I'm feeling before I say it so I know that the feelings are true instead of just talking out of emotion because I don't have to be like, she's so emotional, you know, she she said she was feeling this way today and now tomorrow she's feeling like this. <laughs> and so I just be like, I'm fine when I really want to be fine. And I'm still working on it because he like, at least tell, me, tell me that you process and whatever it is. So like, I'm still working on that part because it's not easy for me to do. Yeah, that's me too. And sometimes I would have to, I, I still, and us being together 17 years, like it takes time. Um, I've learned to, if it's something on my mind and it's bothering me from work, so that I won't bring it inside the house. I sit down in the car 
for at least five to ten minutes to make sure, okay, let me fix my demeanor. Let me get my attitude together because he's going to think it's something towards him when it's really not. So you really have to watch those things. Too, you know, you know. Man, there's a lot of argument, well, I won't say a lot, but some of the argument stem from not even <laughs> between the hood and white. It's something else. <laughs> but you don't know how to come off and just actually just say what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> just to get, I, I feel like you just get it off your chest. Yeah. Because what's, what's one, one of my models? Save people for who they are. <laughs> because it, I feel like you can go out in the world and you can get mad at different people. But you can't get mad at somebody for being who they are. Yeah. Then, then you bring that problem home, and that causes a whole new problem. Right. Hit the house. So I, I always say, man, take people for who they are. However they act, that's how they act. You just leave it at that. And when we come home, we can have a conversation on, okay, how you, how did you really feel? I say, well, I mean, that person, that's how they are. We're gonna leave it at that and just move on. Yeah. That's good. That's a lot of my problems. Like I don't, I try, I try not to stress over something that don't matter. If it don't make me better or make my family better, I can't. I'm not gonna stress over. I promise, I'm not gonna stress over. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so let me ask y'all this: a lot of times, people will ask the question like, "Why marriages don't last like they used to?" like back in the day. And they'd be like, oh, cause the woman couldn't go nowhere. And she she had to depend, you know, on, on the man to do this, or, you know, like it's a different time now. Women don't have to do that and all that stuff. And some of that may be true to an extent, but a lot of it, I feel like people don't really want to put in the, the work that marriage requires. You know, this is not some Oh, I'm mad at you today. So I'm packing up my bag and I'm going to stay with my mom. Right. And I think that they're just used to that. People are very much used to just giving up on stuff, right? Not wanting to put in the work, not wanting to, to fight for it. But if you want something to work, you believe in it, you have to put in that work and you have to be willing to fight for it, no matter how hard it may get. Now, granted, I ain't talking about no toxic, unhealthy, abusive situation, but like, if it's just, we not agreeing on this, we not agreeing on that. So what do you guys think about why marriages aren't lasting? Um, I start off, but for, <laughs> for me, I can only speak on all marriage and, and what I've seen from you know, people around me, but from my upbringing, I don't see no, no marriage. Like my upbringing, when nobody married, um, like when I met, when I met her, like to see, okay, how long your parents been together now? Thirty five, thirty six, something you like that. You better than me. <laughs> but <laughs> just to just to see that, like that's that's like a, a foreign language to me. Like I I never seen that or heard of that. So, and I knew with growing up, um, my mom being a single mom, like I knew. I wanted, I wanted to have me a wife, and I wanted to have the kids, have me some kids, and I wanted my kids to see both of us together all the time. But not all the time, but you know, in the same house, doing every, you know, doing stuff together, stuff I didn't have growing up. Um, but far as like why marriages don't work, I think people see. Kind of like social media to, on social media today. Like whatever you see on social media is, it look. I just told you this the other day. Like it looks like they have they have the best life. They got the best car. They got the best house. They got all the money. Yeah, the highlights. Yeah, but you got to understand like that's the highlights. Like they showing you what they only you know all the good stuff. But when they when that when they put that phone down, they got to deal with real problems. And like and I right and people don't people don't understand that they just like to highlight and stuff. They they'll they'll watch like throwing he in the club, he's throwing all this money, he got all the women, I want that. But what come with that? 
and I'd rather for me, I'd rather be here in the house and, and make my make my family happy with coming up with games or taking them out to eat or going out, you know, on vacation. That's fun to me. Other than than going out and partying, like. So you think social media is the problem? I think nowadays social media is the problem. But as far as like, I think people see stuff they want, but don't understand what it really is once they get it. Yeah, yeah that's good. Well, for me, I think, um, like Joshua said, he came up in a single parent household. I came up in a two parent household. And so I feel like sometimes um, people don't know how to come. Like they may be, they may love someone that they're with, but they don't know how to show the action, you know, of love. And when you don't show it, um, that starts to cause problems. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, you have to be willing to, it's, it's a job. Like it's a 20, marriage is a 24 hour, seven days a week job. And if you're not willing to put in the work, um, it's just not gonna, I'm, you're not gonna be happy. It's not gonna be a, like a, a, a healthy marriage. And with him coming from the background that he came from and me seeing what marriage, you know, looks like, um, I think we were able, we're able to balance a healthy marriage because I'm able to look at things on his side of the spectrum from his upbringing. And I'm able to bring in my side of the spectrum from seeing my parents um, being married. And we're able to bring those two things together and communicate and know how to keep this marriage healthy and together. And I feel like people who married are not successful comes from not being able to let go of pride. Um, some people are not willing. They're stuck in the way of this is how I was raised. I'm not changing for nobody. And that's just how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And you can communicate with your spouse all day whether, uh, okay, this is what I like to do. This is what you like to do. But if you can't come to an agreement as an adult and you, you bringing up childish stuff and looking at social media, that's what I feel like that makes it unhealthy and doesn't. So why, why is having a good marriage like important to, to you guys? Um, to me, especially when kids are involved I, and girls, um, I want my girls to be able to grow up, grow up like they are now and see what marriage is supposed to look like. Am I saying we are the perfect people to show them? No, but I think their dad is doing a great job of showing them, okay, this is how a husband is supposed to treat their wife. Right. And my son knows, okay, this is how I supposed to treat a woman and I think that's very important because if we don't show them like Josh said he didn't see anybody in his marriage his, when he was younger married in his life so if we don't show them those are generational curses that are going to keep going and going and going and we don't want that for our kids now okay Joshua Jr. may decide okay I don't want a wife but if you're going to date you know how to treat you know a woman. Mm -hmm. Carmen, Kelly, they may not um the, when they start dating and they this guy come around and start doing crazy stuff. Oh no, you know, they know that we're showing them, okay, this is how it's supposed to be done done. By far is it gonna be perfect what we're showing them, but they know what's best or will be better um for them. And I think with the with just having kids it's important, you know, to show them that this is how it has to be when you're deciding, okay, if you're going to be married or if you're not. And even if we didn't have kids, um, I just feel like it's an important because when you, most people, when they get married, they go before 
go and say their vows. And to me, God, you did nobody to blame you. And so you exactly, if you don't take those vows serious, I mean, it's nothing that's going to bless it, bless that marriage, you know, um, at all. So it's more important because if your faith is in God and you feel like, I said these vows before God don't play with you. So that's important. Yeah. Yeah. I, used joke, I used to joke all the time and tell. Oh, the things. Uh, <laughs> I used to joke all the time and tell tell Ruth I was like, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to cheat on you because of you. I'm afraid to cheat on you because of the man upstairs. Like cause I know me as a, I know me as a person or just a person period you can you can lose yourself and go out and, and cheat or and, you know, mess up mess, mess up your marriage but that man upstairs ain't playing <laughs> like once you once you go before him and, and say those vows and mean that like there's no good i mean there's no you know there's no no good coming out of that at all with going out and messing up it's, and especially like me as a man, I feel like when we had Carmen, it helped me grow so much yeah. as as a man to to look at a life like, okay, I can't go out here and, and be seen, you know, acting crazy, doing you know whatever I want because once they see me, they're not only thinking of me; they're gonna think of her. I got a baby now; they're gonna think of her. That last name got to mean something. And so, especially now we're having three, like I've been, I feel like I've been blessed to actually teach these to show them how to, you know, maneuver in this world and how they supposed to, how they go. But I treat that as, a, you know, that's a blessing. Uh, that that's that's good because I think oftentimes, you know, especially as a man with that the, the cheating part, it's like. We oftentimes just look here, but it's like, no, I got a relationship with God. I got to to maintain. You know what I mean? Um, and a lot of times we, we don't think about that. We just think about the spouse. But before before I committed to her, you know, I committed I committed to Christ, right? So that's the relationship that I got to establish um, first and foremost, because that's the foundation of of it all. You know what I'm saying? If I'm messing that up, then no way I can you know keep you happy if I if I can't do what I said I was gonna do to the man upstairs. Right. That's good. Yeah, that is good. And I think another thing, like for us, um, just in regards to the children, you know, we didn't get married until Jordan was 12. So Jordan first 12 years, like he knew me as like a single mom. And um, my dad, like he'd been around, but he'd been papa, right? So he ain't been like fussing and like really disciplined. Like he, he don't do that, right? He, all right, do your work. So I'm so thankful that Jordan at such a critical age in his life now gets to see me marry, me being loved properly, seeing what a man should do. And one of the things I always say to Jordan is, well, Lindsay, like he knew how to manage a household before me. Like he doesn't need me to cook for him. He don't need me to clean. He don't need me to do his laundry. He, he know how to pay I his bills. I appreciate it though. If you do it, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> you know? Like he can do all those things, right? Like he, he don't necessarily need me here for that. And so I try to tell Jordan, like, that's what we want to see from you as well. Like you being able to be an independent man so that you don't find yourself depending on a woman because she can cook for you or whatever the reason, but also that you know how to love a woman, how to take care of the home and how to um, provide. Because I can tell Jordan all day, but him seeing the example I think is also going to have such a great impact that maybe me just telling him would not have had. And so I'm just thankful that he gets to, he gets to see it every right. day. Right. Every single day. Um, so as we're wrapping up, I don't have any more questions, but is there anything else that you guys just like a lesson that you've learned or like anything about marriage, any tips, suggestions that you, or advice that you would give to any other couple trying to trying to make it or whatever uh, well josh i, I want to ask you this though then we can close it out it's because i feel like the the black man 
gets a bad rap, right? And some of it may be justified, you know, as, as far as, um, you know, not taking care of their families or, you know, having a bunch of different kids around or whatever that may be. But I feel like, what advice would you give to that young man? Because I feel like at every point, like as a man, you get to that crossroad where you have to decide if you're going to continue to live this life that you have, have been living or you're going to try to be better and, and do something different. What would what advice would you give that young man that may be in his 20s or, or wherever he may be about making that next step into becoming the man? Uh, my bad. We looking around the, the kids. Look, hey, we 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 got the we got ours in the corner over there. So you good? <laughs> nah, but I would say, uh, just handle your business. Yeah. Um, you know what, especially you know if you have a child, you know what that child needs. You know what. I feel like when a, when 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 someone when someone has a child. It's their responsibility to take care of that child and be in that child's life. Right. Um, not in, and not once a week or see that child, you know, once a month or just spend money. Like that money can come and go, but right. that time, that time you spend with that child, like right. you can't. So I would say, you know, handling your business, make sure your child is in your life and you're in on their life. That's good. That's good stuff. That's all I got. <laughs> I would um say listen. It's very key to listen. Um and not just be one sided. Let both parties, husband and wife, get out what they need to get out. Yeah. And not just get it out and just go about your day, but really listen you know, to what they have to say. Um, Good job, with Listen to what they're not saying. <laughs> That's key, because I know for a fact, she said a lot of things with her, her facial expression, with her actions, like, <laughs> so she ran the house, like, I, I picked, on, picked up on everything. All that, of it, right, all of that. Like, I can wake up and see how she, you know, how she moving. Oh, I know what type of day. <laughs> <laughs> like I really can. I, like I only think she know that I know everything about her, how she moving. I I can tell what mood she in, what type of day we've been to have. So I would say, listen to what they're really not saying. That's good. What are you are you preaching, man? Are you. Are you <laughs> And the good thing is, man, I had, before I got married, I had a couple guys um, different with my, and mm -hmm. got, we got together and when I get around older people, especially older people that I, you know, really look up to, I don't talk much around them because when they get to talk, I need to listen. Picking up game. Right. And that's why I picked up from this, you know, how to really be a husband because I already knew going into it and it was a lot of work. Yeah. So, listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank y'all so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think it was it was good talk and I hope that the people that uh, will watch will be encouraged um, and seeing, you know, two um, two young couples um, trying to make it, you know, not thinking that they got it figured out, but just really trying to make it and being intentional about having a good marriage and, and having a family and, and making it work. So thank you guys so much. And again, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube, make sure that you subscribe. All right, thank you. I'm gonna stop. Order.